That's great. Now, as we wrap up here, there's one thing that you hit on, and we've talked about a lot, the Krebs cycle, which I'm going to show all our listeners that, your wonderful posters. But you talked about a study, I believe, uh, maybe it's MIT or Massachusetts somewhere, where 73%, don't quote me on these numbers because I didn't memorize it, but children with autism and ADHD had uh, mitochondrial Krebs cycle deficiencies. Yeah, that was a study we did that um, unfortunately didn't get published for the data. We, we pooled from uh, three practitioners, mm-hmm. and we had about uh, three, 400 kids. And um, the, when the uh, organic acids test those Krebs cycle metabolites were out of range in about 72% of the kids. Wow. So. so organic acids is a great test. You looked at A2HDG or the marker of oxidative stress, right. but also you like organic acids to look at intracellular metabolism. I do. I can show you an example, if, but it's, it's got like 10 different categories. Um, we can show a PDF on there. And while you're grabbing that, so how do we support that? So we've talked about methylation, talked about vitamin C, we've talked about minimizing exposure to toxins, the elimination diet. How do we support the Krebs cycle? Well, um, the, what the what you get on the uh, organic acid Krebs cycle report, there's see two, four, six markers that will can help you point in a direction. It's not, it's not rocket science yet, but hopefully will be. Um, whether it's glutathione, whether it looks like toxicity, whether it looks like nutrient deficiencies like NAD and CoQ10. Um, so that will give you some help. Uh, taking away the toxic load and high dose ascorbate, I do think it's underutilized. Um, cytochrome C, which is a transducer in the electron transport pathway. And just as a backup for your listeners, 90% of our energy comes from the mitochondria. It produces ATP, universal energy currency. So for an electron to move down that electron pathway is really the fundamental of life. Mm -hmm. One of the definitions of life has been uh, electrons through membranes across the long membranes, and then when the electrons move through that Gradient, which is only 1.2 volts from the NADH to oxygen, that's only 1.2 volt difference. So all the energy of life comes from electrons moving down that potential gradient. And then the electrons create a hydrogen gradient. Mm-hmm. So uh, electron force pumps hydrogens through the membranes, through the pores. And if you've seen those incredible graphics now of the ATP turbine, yeah, hydrogens actually are turning a turbine. Cool. To make ATP, ADP combined with phosphorus. Mm-hmm. So that critical pathway um, is very complex, very efficient. So there's so many ways it can be disrupted. But one of the ways to salvage it is with high dose vitamin C, because mm-hmm. it's an electron donor to cytochrome C in that pathway. Now, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but uh, see what we see with things that we can easily correct. Again, repeat like CoQ10, NADH, um, the B-complex deficiencies, okay. and correcting heavy metals. And that's really the good part of what we do is the body will correct itself. So that common phrase that I learned many years ago from uh, mentors like Sid Baker, um, called to the tack rule. If you're sitting on three tacks, taking away two tacks doesn't make you Two-thirds better, but right, right. but um, at some point the body can reestablish its balance. So that's our job is to look as thoroughly and deeply as we can to the imbalances, and then it will correct. But uh, um, it's a challenge. The other things you can look at specific mitochondria are ammonia levels and some amino acids like alanine. Um, but with all that knowledge, there's only a handful of things that will correct mitochondrial function and another controversy some of the mainstream groups because of the parents and uh, clinicians have really tried to support the mitochondria in autism uh, but I feel it's very safe when you it's a small list CoQ10 carnitine we haven't mentioned mm-hmm. which is as you know feeds the mitochondria fatty acids 
and then the NADH um, and the glutathione. Um, there's some really good research using phospholipids mm. for mitochondrial function. Mm. Um, and I think that can be helpful with different formulations that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, just as an aside, you know, we know glyphosate and different compounds in genetically engineered foods contain surfactants, which I recently caught up with Alex Vasquez, and he showed a lot of research showing that these surfactants, which help to puncture cell walls of plants, uh, damage our own mitochondria, and we've talked about the critical, you know, cellular components and the differences in electricity really drive life, that's really problematic. So cellular health is something you probably right. focus on. And, and as you mentioned, that's what's intriguing, too, because that mitochondria is actually bacteria. Ah, right, the uh, symbiosis theory. Um, it's an interesting story, Mike. I'll mention it because to me it's it's fascinating. But Lynn Margulis, she passed away recently. Recently, she was that researcher at uh, I think at University of Massachusetts in Amherst, and she was kind of a hippie in the '60s. And she was saying, "Well, you know, life is a synthesis as opposed to the uh, survival of the fittest or nature's red." tooth and claw, that whole theory about. Right. But she had this interesting idea, and she was considered very fringe and wacky, but that the mitochondria, being a bacteria, mm -hmm. uh, that synthesis happened like 3.5 billion years ago. If that was true, then there should be DNA in the mitochondria. So she looked for DNA, and she found it. Mm -hmm. So then, this is the beauty of science, though, because she had a hypothesis, and she tested it. So when she found the DNA, she went from a fringe hippie to respectable scientist. Right. But it's a whole other way of thinking that we are really a symbiosis, mm -hmm. and that um, the bacteria have created life on Earth. I think that's something that needs to be kept in mind when we have our view that we can use antibiotics and vaccines to kill and right. <laughs> vaccinate our way to health. Yeah. But the bacteria create life on the planet, have eaten the rocks create soil, the symbiosis with plants and chloroplast for photosynthesis and mitochondria for energy in our cells. So it's really a fascinating story. I will mention one book, um, uh, Earth Dance okay. by Elizabeth Sartoris. She's an evolutionary biologist and uh, she has a fascinating view, which I, for me is very hopeful, but she pointed out that the bacteria were able to create life on Earth by working together. And if they exchange information, they have a certain intelligence. Mm -hmm. And she said, humans have to become like the bacteria and learn how to work together. I like that. So it's a little more involved than that, but it's yeah. it's really worth checking out because I think it's a brilliant synthesis and understanding yeah. you know, that it is connected. Sure. Earth dance. Earth dance. We'll put that in the show notes, highintensityhealth.com slash schwartz. Okay, so Dr. Schwartz, how can our listeners learn more about work, your work and contact you? Um, well, I'm still somewhat old school. I, I'm just working on a website, sure. uh, Norm Schwartz, MD. I have more information on that coming up and uh, do a little more talking and getting the word out. That's what I enjoy. Uh, you have a lot to say, so you should do more. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm.